Meeting planners, how diligent are you in reviewing your AV proposals and contracts? And I mean really diligent. Stephen was helping one of our clients out with their AV proposal, and boy, did we see a lot of glaring fees. So we want to share these best practices in reviewing AV proposals with you today. Stick around. Hey friends, it's Stephen and Leanne from conferencesource.net and today we're talking about hidden fees on AV proposals and contracts. But before we, we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the little bell to be notified of our content. We put out videos every week for the meetings industry including best practices and tips and tricks that you can use. Now let's launch into today's video. As I mentioned earlier, Stephen was helping one of our clients go through their AV proposal and boy, did he see a lot of things that this planner needed to be aware of. So today we're going to chat with Stephen about some of the things that he saw. Thanks for joining us today, Steve. Hey, Leanne. I'm glad we could get together today. Um, it's, it's not often we get to share a screen. Uh, today we're going to talk about a couple of things in the industry that have really come to light uh, with various clients. And uh, I don't want to pick on any AV company specifically, but here's a couple of things that planners need to be mindful of. So Stephen, can you give me an example of what we're really talking about here? Yeah, sure, Leanne. Uh, you know, re recently I was asked to review a contract um, that was not sourced by us um, from an AV company um, that listed a service charge that was 40% of the total invoice. Um, and I was told that this covers service charges, uh, support elements uh, beyond equipment and dedicated labor, uh, which, are, which they build for separately. Um, this included technology support, event management before, during, and after the event. Well, in this case, they never actually met with the AV tech team before or after the event. While on site, you know, limited, but you know, uh, it certainly didn't warrant a 40% uh, surcharge. Um, I was also told that this provided daily gear preparation and testing and, and accompanying consumables such as batteries, projector bulbs, and tape. Really, to be honest, I, I just find this outrageous. My question is, what exactly does rental cover? Um, when I'm buying a service, my expectation is that the gear testing is, is a cost of being in the AV industry and part of the rental. You know, uh, consumables such as projector bulbs, come on, this is the gear rental and, and not an add-on. Uh, outrageous. Um, and this client was simply duped by not knowing the terms out. So Stephen, this clearly has you passionate about service fees and AV firms. Yeah, I totally get it. You know, AVs have a huge expense when it comes to equipment and continually having to reinvent new technology when it comes out. I mean, it must be exorbitant. Um, that being said, we all get heated when you get charged $12 for a power bar that you could buy at the dollar store for about four bucks. Uh, I think what AV companies need to do is a better job of, you know, positioning themselves with their consumers. Um, posting charges for service fees just feels like a cash grab and it's, it's really not well received. I was also told by an AV company that service charge covers all the customer benefits of using an on-site audio-visual provider, um, such as having you know, pop-up equipment on property. To be honest, I was outraged. I mean, so if, if that's the case, then where's my shipping savings? Because that wasn't included. So um, I think you know, I need to rework that one for sure. So Stephen, what can meeting planners do? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, you need to really look closely at the proposal and the contract um, and what's included. Of course, you know, much of what's written may as well be in another language because we don't know what they are by product code. And if you don't understand what a certain charge that's been posted has been, you need to ask the question. Secondly, I think you always need to allow uh, a concession to include an outside provider without fees. You know, you really need to make sure that you're not bound to that in-house audiovisual company. And while I certainly see the value in that and having companies be right on site, you don't want to be tied to it and their costing um, that's associated. It seems a lot of companies are protecting their in-house rights by, you know, tying things like internet to exclusive use uh, with the in-house provider. Competition is what will keep them honest and, and to, the ability to source alternatives makes it competitive. Thanks for sharing those tips, Stephen. So what other things are you seeing out there lately? This is a personal favorite. I'm seeing a lot of contracts include complimentary internet service in the function space. 
it sounds great until you find out that it's two megabytes of service, mm -hmm. not enough to power Netflix. Um, the next step, of course, will cost a fortune. And again, is tied to the in-house audiovisual company. You really need to spell out in a contract what is needed and it, when it comes to complementary internet and the function space that you're using it in. And of course, if the planner is a client of ours, Stephen, they can always lean on us for our support and for contract review, which is what you've done with this current client as well. Yeah, I know we're always happy to be an industry resource and mm -hmm. I'd like to be called upon with questions about these and other industry challenges that people are facing. Mm -hmm. Well, I certainly sure learned a lot from you over the last couple of weeks about the AV fees and I do appreciate your expertise. Planners, we also want to hear from you. We want to hear what you're seeing out there on your AV proposals and contracts. Share your best practices by commenting below this video. We'll compile those best practices together and ensure that they go out to your peers as well. Friends, we've turned Stephen's best practices into a blog post. You can check that out over on conferencesource.net. While you're over there, you can learn about our complimentary services for meeting planners as well. I want to thank Stephen for joining us today and enlightening us about the hidden fees that we can find in AV proposals. And we invite you to join us next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye for now. Thank you.